So it's a little bit colder than it was last year, maybe the year before this time. Um, seems like we're having a little bit of a colder at least January and February for the last couple of years, uh, maybe closer to normal. Uh, but this is the time of year when we get warm days that people discover that their bees are gone. And that's not really any different from past years in terms of uh, people discovering different times during the winter that their bees are gone. And there can be a number of different causes uh, from uh, the size of the colony uh, to lack of food uh, to impacts of pests like Varroa and tracheal mites. And those mites, of course, carry viruses and some bacteria, which are in reality what impact our colonies. And the impacts can take uh, a while to catch up with the cluster, especially if it's a large bee colony. Uh, it may be later in the winter when they will succumb as the weather drops and it gets cold uh, to the effects of those viruses. And so we then discover this time of year uh, that they're not alive. And so uh, I'm not going to comment on, uh, on the commercial side, there's apparently talk of huge losses this year. Um, I don't have thousands of colonies, so I'm not gonna comment on that. I'm sure that will be uh, looked into further um, but, uh, let me just generally say for, I know there are some bigger losses, uh, locally and across Pennsylvania. And I, I think we can still point back to some of the basics, uh, even though I think as we go forward, you've got to recognize with the weather changing, like every year has been a little bit different, our approach has to match that. And we often get into a pattern or trying to predict why well, do this on a particular month or time of year, and that can create a lot of problems. So for example, in 2024, uh, we had a warm start to the year. We had some, uh, some drops, some cold then in the spring, back and forth uh, rain uh, when the first heavy honey flow in May hit. Um, then a lot of dry and then uh, a little bit of rain the end of the summer uh, some place in PA had more northern PA had more and then uh, a very very long fall almost uh, to Thanksgiving so it was really different than maybe your average year and that has impacts on the food for the bees, uh, pollen quality can vary based on weather, based on rain, and you often don't see the effects for a couple of months, the, the pollen a couple of months later from plants that suffered poor conditions months ago can impact them. And so that, that can have a huge effect also on the bees. And the varroa mites then, the challenge is when you have an early start to the year like we did, um, the Mites also have an early start to the year and they grow exponentially. And the problem with most of the year, spring into summer, is that uh, bees are building and regenerating constantly. And so it really hides the problem because the mites primarily are under the cap root unless you have a really bad situation. So uh, we most likely had people who had high mite counts uh, that may not been as visible in the summer and those were the colonies that crashed early fall and then we have other people who had uh, mite levels that were probably under control until we got to the fall uh, it people used to say well if you treat it in july or august uh, sometime in august that's pretty much setting them up for the winter to make it through the winter uh, if you're just going by a calendar but august this year was more like a july or early because it was warm up through November. So if you treated in August uh, and you had heavy mite pressure from colonies around you or your own colonies, uh, there was a pretty good chance that there was plenty of time for the mites to build up to significant levels once again, which spreads the viruses and you wouldn't have noticed it until over the winter.
And so you might, uh, might have thought you had things under control, had low mic counts, um, doing well. Even if you tested in September, you might have thought that. And now we did more mic testing this past year than normal because of our test yards and test colonies and some experiments we were doing. So I did actually get to observe this where we saw uh, things well under control uh, late September, early October, and then we did some end of October counts. And as because the brew just was much uh, more uh, present than it would typically be in the fall uh, for us. Uh, late into the fall, lots of brood. And so the end of October, then we saw those counts just jump. And it wasn't necessarily crashing, but the disappearance of that brood more like we would have seen uh, late August and uh, on a typical year, on an average year. Uh, so that really can play a role. So a couple of things, I'll try to bring these keepers around so you can see them. Uh, one, this is not my exact area, but it's the Harrisburg area, and you can see um, the weather map and it's for fall. And you can see the temperatures going up and down, but you know, it's warm weather almost the whole way, uh, the temperatures on the left-hand side, almost the whole way through November. Uh, very warm weather. Even if some of the nights might have dipped here and there, uh, there wasn't this uh, early, there wasn't even an early freeze. Even the northern areas of the state had very late frosts. Um, so, and that all had an impact on uh, the bees and if they were maintaining brood, etc. And I think most have heard of Randy Oliver. This, he has this Varroa model and Excel spreadsheet. And also uh, there's a web-based uh, format version of this that uh, someone has created for him. And you can plug in, and this, this one I encourage you to go check out. You can plug in uh, starting mite levels and when you're treating, what the efficacy you think of the treatment is, and <laughs> don't want to guess on that really. But I put some averages in just to kind of show you. So if someone uh, treated, let's say they treated in the spring, if they're treating their bees, or they, they didn't uh, have high mite counts, or thought they didn't have high mite counts, and they did a mid-August treatment um, as the mites count started to go up, or because... Uh, uh, they were just treating based on a schedule. You can still see on the far right hand side, that dark shaded area is a colony crashing over the winter uh, because it's just not enough for the exponential growth of the mites. And yeah, check it, check out this model. Uh, you can plug in uh, what you did. Uh, don't, when you're doing this, don't be overly optimistic on like saying, well, I had a 99% efficacy on my mite treatments or my mites were super low. Be, try to be as realistic as possible. And hopefully that gives you um, some thoughts as you go forward. So first, I hope your bees are alive and I hope uh, we have a great start to the spring when it warms up. Uh, we're all ready and excited for spring. Our production colonies uh, haven't taken any more than the average loss, probably still in the maybe 10% uh, overall loss. And, uh, but, um, just going forward, knowing that, yeah, I, I think there's value in uh, testing for mites late in October. So at least, you know, you can't really fix the situation then, but it's good to know. So it can answer some of those questions that you might have otherwise uh, in March or in February when you open up and see a colony that has not survived.